Jesus, Savior, Lord, now to you I come. Serenam, serenam, serenam. You're my rock, my refuge, my heavenly home. Serenam, serenam, serenam. Come the earth where I may be, out of desperation and to agony. I cry in helplessness, oh, answer me. Serenam, serenam, serenam. Jesus, Savior, Lord, now do you I come. Serenam, serenam, serenam. You're my rock, my refuge, my heavenly home. Serenam, serenam, serenam. In your heart give me a hiding place, and beneath your wings let me find sheltering grace. Sunshine of your face, Serenam, Serenam, Serenam. Jesus, Savior, Lord, now to you I come, Serenam, Serenam, Serenam. You're my rock, my refuge, my heavenly home, Serenam, Serenam, Serenam. to you my vows I'll pay and give thanks for all your mercy every day I'll humbly follow in your perfect way Serenam, Serenam, Serenam Jesus, Savior, Lord, now to you I come Serenam, Serenam, Serenam my rock, my refuge, my heavenly home, Serenam, Serenam, Serenam. O Lord, in your word, you show us how to live with one another. In your word, you show us how to trust in you. Open our ears, our hearts, and our minds so that we will understand your message for us today. Amen. Be reading Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever. Find refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, our God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of, of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will always sing praises to your name as I pay my vows day by day portions of Psalm 34 verses 1 to 14 and then verse 22. Listen, listen for the word of the Lord. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. 
And here's our line from the hymn to sing later. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. After a long day of hiking on the Appalachian Trail, it is a welcome sight to see looming in front of you on the trail one of those three-sided wooden shelters, complete with usually a fire pit and sometimes even a picnic table to enjoy. That shelter is a place of protection from the elements for hikers. Whether it's the cold wind that you find in the fall or the winter or the early spring, whether it's the rain that might fall any time of the year. It's also a little bit of protection, at least psychological protection, from the closeness of any variety of forest animals that might be around you. I certainly feel better in a shelter, even with three sides, than in my tent. I seem a little closer to animals out there. By making use of the shelter, you can rest, you can relax, you can be warmer and drier than you would be otherwise, a structure can definitely provide shelter. In another sense, so can a mother's arms provide shelter. During this past week with our grandchildren around and watching them interact with one another and the rest of our family members, I saw the mommy shelter in action big time. Our grandson Paxton is 18 months old. He loves to play with his sister, play with his cousin, interact and laugh and tease with the adults in the room. He loves to run and to climb until his mother walks in the room. Just a glimpse of her makes him cry uncontrollably and reach his hands out like this toward her because he wants his mommy shelter. He wants refuge in her arms, hugging her neck and stopping crying immediately and a smile is back on his face. It's very difficult to distract him when this process begins, even with daddy nearby. He's inconsolable until he finds himself wrapped in the sheltering arms of his mommy. Now, we all recognize this as a normal activity, normal step and stage in child development, and I'm very much assuming it will not last forever and that he will grow out of it. The psalmists describe God as our shelter, our refuge, we're used to using terms like Father, Almighty, Creator, King, or Rock to describe God. Some use Mother, Provider, Help, or Lord. How would it feel for you? Think about this for a moment. How would it feel for you if you used the term, My Shelter, when you began a prayer addressing God. It might sound something like this. My shelter, fill me with your peace. Show me the path you have for me. Protect me from the storms within and without that I will face this day. I thank you for being my refuge and my rest. Amen. 
God the shelter is an appropriate addition to the list of these themes that we have been exploring throughout our Summer with the Psalms series. If you think back and if you've been listening as we've gone along this summer, you can understand that since God is sovereign over all, since all of creation praises the Lord, since God chooses the side of those who are poor or vulnerable, because God is just and righteous, therefore, we can place our trust in God. Putting our trust in God, trusting our lives to God, indicates that our trust is not in other humans and not in ourselves. When the Psalms of trust, as these two Psalms we read today are called, when these Psalms of trust describe this kind of relationship to God, we find the term refuge and shelter repeated again and again, describing the source of our help in times of trouble. God, the shelter. Finding refuge in God is the source of genuine happiness described by some of the psalmists, that that is where we find true happiness is when we are seeking our refuge in God. God's the one who protects, helps, and rescues. The image of God as shelter is found in several different psalms in addition to the two that we read this morning. There are multiple references in them to what happens when we're living or abiding in the shadow of God's wings. It was even in the song that we sang this morning, being under the wings of God. We find protection under the wings of God from the storm. Or it describes that under the wings of God, we sing with joy. Or we find that we are truly happy under the wings of God. Or we find a place to hide when we need it under the wings of God. All these expressions of trust grow out of either personal or corporate experiences of having been both heard and listened to by God, of having been saved or rescued by God from something. And out of that experience, these psalmists write these psalms of trust. This image of being sheltered under God's wings could find its roots, perhaps, in one or both of these experiences. Let me describe. One of them could be actually being physically in the temple, in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. Perhaps you remember that. We'll get to it in a second. The other might be viewing God's actions and attributes like those of a mother eagle or a hen protecting her young. That first experience refers to the individual or the community of faith gathered in the temple and literally being, as they understood it, in the presence of God. In the book of Exodus, the people of Israel are given very explicit instructions about how to build this Ark of the Covenant, a box that would hold inside of it the tablets of the Ten Commandments. This box has to be made a very specific size, made out of a very specific wood, and covered in gold. The top of the Ark, the cover, is adorned with two winged creatures, one on either end of the cover, facing each other with their wings spread out, as if they are covering and protecting that ark. It's a beautiful image of God's sheltering wings. You see, for them, being in the temple would feel like they are under the shelter of those wings of God. 
I know some of you feel that when you walk into this place, into this sanctuary, when you're here physically, when we gather here in this space, and when we join with others in worship of God, we too sense we're surrounded by God's presence. And you might say we're under the shelter of God's wings. Then the second potential source of being sheltered under the wings of God is in Deuteronomy chapter 32. It's the use of a feminine image of God as an eagle with her wings protecting her young. The image is part of a beautiful poem that is spoken by Moses in the book of Deuteronomy, describing God as the one who found the people of Israel in the wilderness and protected them, cared for them, and watched over that whole community of faith with God's very own eye. Here's one line of that poem. Like an eagle protecting its nest, hovering over its young, God spread out his wings, took hold of Israel, and carried him on his back. A beautiful image and metaphor of God's care for the people. Then there follows a description of how God nursed Israel and fed the people with all the choicest foods and with milk. In a similar way, I can see my daughter-in-law repeatedly lifting a sobbing Paxton into her arms, protecting him, caring for him, and watching over him with her eye, offering comfort and shelter under her wings, if you will. Paxton already has deeply ingrained in him a strong trust of this mommy shelter. Trusting in God enables us, then, to see God as shelter. You don't find shelter in someone you don't trust, correct? These confident words that describe God as shelter are found in both of these psalms that we read this morning. In Psalm 61, it's more like a prayer, a petition to God, asking God to allow the psalmist to allow him or her to take refuge in the shelter of God's wings. Whereas in Psalm 34, it's more like a statement of faith that the Lord saves his servants' lives, the lives of those who take refuge in him. Taking refuge brings safety, comfort, protection, and rescue whether it's taking refuge in God or in mommy's arms or in a shelter along the Appalachian Trail. Seeing God as shelter reminds me of the words of Jesus. Perhaps you remember getting close to the end of his life. He's walking along and looking down at Jerusalem and has compassion on that city that seems to have turned its back on God at this time. He says, both in Matthew and in Luke, how often I have wanted to gather your people just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, offering you shelter and protection. So I ask you and I ask myself, do we make it a practice to look to God as shelter? as refuge. The essential first step in doing that is trust, trusting God. Now that's a big step. Some of us are very cautious about trusting anyone, including God. We might feel we've been burned too many times. We might feel that God did not come through and come to our aid when things went sour when the crises of life were overwhelming, we humans are really good at holding on to the negative, are we not? Too often allowing those experiences to eclipse the positive ways that God has provided help 
salvation or rescue on a daily basis for us. Trust develops over time, surely, as a relationship deepens and strengthens. You don't trust a person you just met with very personal information. You share more about yourself as you develop that trust, as you build it between the two of you. The same goes for our relationship with God. It requires trust. So to look to God as shelter, we also must realize that there's never any expectation in the psalmist's words that we'll be able to completely avoid troubles in this life. There's no assumption like that. Many of those psalmists are writing from the point of view of the ones who are harassed, the ones who are discarded by the rest of society, the ones who are ignored or oppressed. All of them experiencing these kinds of things at the hands of who they define as the wicked or the oppressors or the enemy. They definitely see themselves as being among the righteous, the ones who follow God, and they view their troubles with their enemies as a direct result of their relationship with God. These writers are living truly right in the middle of troubles of all different kinds, just as we do and just as our world does every day. So we do, we trust in God enough to seek shelter in God's arms on the rough days, on the sad days, on the days when even the smallest task seems impossible to accomplish. God is the one who offers comfort and rest, renewal and respite from the fray that we face every day. Can we chime in with the psalmists and bury our head in God's shoulder when we're feeling frustrated, when we're feeling frazzled? Can we seek refuge in the one we trust to never leave us, to carry us when we can no longer take another step on our own, to guide us on the path ahead and to embolden us to keep on keeping on. My family in Christ, disciples of the Lord, I say to you and I say to me, we can do that. We can. Paxton only needs a very short time to be comforted in his mommy shelter, wrapped in her loving arms, Soon he's ready to jump back down and energetically and joyfully play again. The hiker does not stay at the shelter for long, only long enough to take the pack off and to eat a meal, to dry out her wet socks, perhaps, and to get a good night's sleep. And then in the morning, she's on her way along the trail toward whatever is around the next bend. We can seek God the shelter when we need a rest, a break, a hiding spot away from the troubles that seem to surround us. God the shelter may be experienced anywhere, anytime. Because seeking God the shelter is entering into the presence of God. It's being covered by the wings of God like that mother eagle watches over and protects her young. It could be at a quiet mountain stream. It could be on a noisy city street. It could be when you're alone. It could be when you are with others. It could be in the sanctuary or it could be in the cellar. Pray with me. My shelter, fill me with your peace. Show me the path you have for me. 
protect me from the storms within and without that I will face this week. I thank you for being my refuge and my rest. Amen. Thank you. 